Hi there, this video is sponsored by Shipping6, a like-minded crew of PLC software engineers who are bringing modern practices to automation. More on that later. Twinkat 4026 is now officially released. Woohoo! In my previous videos about Twinkat 4026, I discussed what is new in 4026. What I never discussed was how to install the XAR, which is the runtime on the PLC, and how to deploy applications to it. This is the quest of running 4026 code on a 4026 PLC. So you've got your 4026 XAE installed. You're using the package manager now to install all your software. On the PLC side, before 4026, you installed the XAR as a separate executable, an installer that included all required software to transfer your compiled executable and run it on the target. In 4026, there is no separate XAR installer anymore. So how do you install the XAR on the PLC so that you can install and run Twinkat software on a 4026 PLC? That's what we will answer today. Hello everyone! Okay, Twinkat 4026 has been released. It's quite funny, it was actually released on my birthday, so hoo -hoo, happy birthday to myself! Uh, it was released just in time for the Hanover Messe, and yeah, that was quite a nice surprise. Now I thought I've been doing a couple of videos about Twinkat 4026 already. I have been doing uh, three videos about it already, about the beta, so the one that was before the final release, or the first release of 4026. And there I went through a little bit more of the um, development environment, right? How does the development environment look like? What are the differences? I got introduced to a little bit about the package manager and some other concepts. We never really talked about how this works on the runtime, and I've literally been bombarded, bombarded, like with messages from people asking like, okay, I know how to do it with Twinkat 4024 or everything before 4026, but how does it work with Twinkat 4026, right? So what I have here is a completely fresh development environment machine, and I have a remote desktop connection here to a back of PLC, a CX5240 here on my desk. And I'm just gonna show you how you install software in, in the runtime and additional supplements, whatever you might want on the runtime device itself here, in this case, using Windows 10 on the on the runtime. So because there is quite a big difference, right? Before, what you normally did was that you installed the runtime on the PLC, right? So you had this XAR and in, in the XAR, you got everything that you needed to run the runtime, you know, so the scheduler, the network real time drivers, uh, ADS and all kinds of other things. Now, Bekoff have uh, uh, abandoned this whole idea with these big installer files. You know, now they're using the package manager, which I talked about before. By the way, if you haven't watched my videos, previous videos, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, then watch my other three videos that I have already made about Twinkat 4026. So you install the XAR and that was it. Uh, now with the package manager, you can be a little more picky and install you know exactly the things you you want maybe you don't want to have certain parts of the xar right maybe you don't want everything maybe you only want certain parts of it that's what we're gonna look uh, into a little bit today because again one of the most common questions i've gotten since 4026 was released is okay 4026 sounds great but how do i actually use it on the runtime that's what i'm gonna discuss today so what you do is, uh, what I prepared here is on the development environment machine, I have the latest and greatest 4026 in installed on my computer. So the development environment itself, this is not the runtime, this is my development computer. And uh, if you want to know how I did this, just see my previous videos. Basically, I just started the, the package manager and I selected the standard here, the standard workload. The standard workload, you know, that includes the development environment, so everything that was in the previous XAE, right? So the, you know, Visual Studio, libraries, compilers, all kinds of stuff that, that you want, um, and safety editor, etc, etc. Including also the XAR, you know, so you also get the runtime. So I could run code locally here. I'm not going to do that today. Today we're going to do a full deployment on an actual XAR, so an actual PLC. I just installed this here as a preparation. I have not installed anything on the PLC. So the PLC, if you go here to the PLC, is completely clean. There's nothing on it. I haven't installed this XCR. There's no, you know, there's no Twinket symbol down here. You know, not, nothing with ADS, no AMS routes, anything. It's just a clean PLC 
So I'm going to show you how to do that. The documentation here uh, mentions some of the things that we want to know. But basically what you need is that you need to have the package manager installed on the target device itself. So that's the big difference to how it was before. Right? Before you had XCR. Now you have the package manager. Install everything from there. Everything that you might need. Now I hear you say, but Jacob, oh my god. How does it work? I mean, doesn't my computer, doesn't my PLC need to have uh, internet? All the time you know like the package manager it's using the as you saw in my previous videos it uses internet to connect to the package server and everything and no you don't need to worry about that you can create package sources locally on uh, the plc so using a usb stick or using the local hard drive whatever you can download pre-download all packages put them on a usb stick and put them inside the plc and say here are my packages please install the XAR from here. And that's what we're gonna do today. The first thing you're gonna have to do is to download the package manager itself, because we're, again, we're gonna have to install this on the PLC. And this is available through the Bekoff website. So I simply downloaded the package manager and I put it on a USB stick. So you're gonna have to put it on a USB stick because we're gonna transfer it to the PLC. I mean, of course, if you have network connection to the PLC, where we could, you know, you could just download it directly and put it over there. But here I'm assuming the kind of standard case i don't know if i want to call it standard case but common case and that is that the plc have no has no internet connectivity right just like it, it it might have connectivity locally in our network but there's no internet connectivity to it directly it's a standalone unit standing in some dirty old factory somewhere and we're going to install twinket 426 on it it's separated from everything else so we're going to go there with a usb stick with everything we need that's the use case uh, here obviously if it has internet everything gets much easier because if it has internet, you could just use the package server. You could just download the package manager directly from internet on the PLC, and you could use the Beckhoff's official package servers directly, right? But that's the happy case. I don't like the happy cases. Uh, I like the bad cases, the tricky one uh, cases. So we I've downloaded the package manager on the USB stick, but that's not enough. We need to download everything related to the XAR, the runtime as well. And Beckhoff has a very good document for this called Working Offline. Working Offline, okay, that sounds good. It basically says that you need to have the a system with access to the feeds. So again, what they're referring to here is that we need a computer that can download the packages, right? So this is my development environment. The development environment, tricky word. Uh, my development environment has access to internet, so I can download all packages and prepare them for the uh, target runtime, which doesn't have internet. And what I can do is that I can download all my packages related to the XAR, so the workload for the XAR to a device. So in this case, the USB stick, right? And this is the, this is the key, right? I can download all the packages I need uh, for a specific word, workload or actually any packages and put them on a certain device. Then I can... Put, take that USB stick with me, you know, this guy. I can take that with me, put it in the PLC, like chip, and I can tell the PLC to please use that. You know, instead of using those those sources from Beckhoff, the official ones or the testing ones or the stable ones, whichever ones, don't use them, use the one from the USB stick. That's what we're gonna do. And that's quite easy. So we do exactly what it says here. When you use the, um, uh, the TCP package manager, from the command line, we're gonna have to provide this, right? So right now I will just do exactly more or less what it says here. I'm gonna create a folder called packages offline. I'm gonna create a folder uh, and I'm gonna tell TC uh, package to download everything for the XAR and put it there. So I'm just gonna copy paste this. I'm gonna go to my package manager. So what they're using here is, is this, you know, if I run TC package download. No, downloads a package or a list of packages. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to download a list of packages with the output of this folder. So I'll copy paste that. And let's see if we can manage that. And instead of C, I have E. Uh, because that's what my USB drive is. Yes. And that should pretty much be it. Let's see here. We'll download the following packages. And here we can see actually. Uh, and this is quite interesting, I think. You know, normally when you install the XCR, you really never see or maybe even think about what's actually what the XCR actually consists of. This is much more transparent, I would say, right? The XCR here, we can see it consists of some CX device. So I guess that's some specific stuff for CX um, PLCs. Driver space, uh, Etiquette Slave. I guess this is all drivers for uh, real-time network 
right? Like eat the cat, for example. Profinet, of course. Uh, real time, I guess that's the scheduler. And you can even see the versions of each one of them, which I think is quite nice because then you can decide which ones of those you want to update. Whether you want to update all of them or whether you just want to update uh, each one of these individually, right? Because what we're doing here is actually that we're taking the latest version right now, right, of all the packages. But, you know, when this has been out for a while, you know, the, the package ver versions, they're going to they're gonna be incremented because Bekoff are going to release new packages. And then you can decide which individual packages you want to upgrade, given that they're, of course, compatible you know, with each other. So that's going to be very exciting, I think. Continue, yes. Now it starts to download them, so we just have to wait. Okay, that was quite quick. Uh, we can actually see here now in this packages of line, all of this is in total 69 megabytes. So that's quite small, actually. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to eject this guy and I'm going to put it inside the PLC. Before we continue, a few words from our sponsor. Hey, hey, want to bring your attention to something really cool that Loop just put out. It is a digital twin showcase that features an example machine that's a four axis knife grinder. It was designed by our friends at Applied Motion Systems. And we use NVIDIA Omniverse and we built an extension that talks to a Beckhoff CNC simulator that's running in real time. So if you've ever been curious about virtual production, how to use digital twins to do development and testing and validation, something I highly suggest you check out. We've open sourced all the components. If you want to know more, you can check us out at Ship and Six team or look for us on the nvidia extension browser in omniverse hope to see you there okay i've inserted the usb stick to the plc so here we go again this is a remote desktop normally if it didn't have any network connection whatsoever you would probably have a monitor or something connected to the plc i'm making my life a little bit easier here we have the usb stick there so we're going to start with installing the package manager again you need to have the package manager on the target itself which is kind of like a surprise because when i explain this to people they're like, oh, that's additional work and everything. And But, you know, you have to think of the benefits the package manager gives you as well. Okay, this is a little bit slow, probably because of my bad network connection to the PLC. Oh yeah, there I lost the remote desktop. Okay, back on track, install. There has to be a little bit of problems, obviously, when you're going to demo or show something for someone. Then the demo ghost shows up and ruins your day because nothing can ever fully perfectly work when you're working with computers then there is just always something that has to screw you up okay the package manager is installed we can verify that it's working by simply running on the plc um, running the tc package that looks good to me and uh, we can also run the uh, graphical user interface which i'm gonna use for the rest of this video uh, note that here I will now not add any remote package sources, right? Imagine again that this PLC is not connected to the internet. It won't have access to the backoff servers for all the packages. I'm only going to use my USB here as a source for the packages. Okay, here normally what we would do and what you maybe already have done if you use the beta is that we add a feed, right? The back of stable feed is with all these uh, stable packages or the testing feed, which is the back of, uh, you know, the packages that are not fully tested and not ready for, you know, production on a production environment. But again, we don't have internet here, so we're not going to use either of these. We're not going to use the stable feed. We're not going to use the testing feed. What we're going to do is we're going to follow this and we're going to add a local feed. So instead of this, the stable feed, here, we're gonna create the local, and we're gonna point it to our E drive. Oops, so here's the problem. I have a Swedish keyboard, but um, there is an American, an English, let's see if I have Swedish here. Oh, German, oh, that makes life even tougher. No, forget about it. Nine, as you say in Germany, packages offline. No username and no password, right? Next saving so, and now i'm adding the usb stick as a package source for my runtime for the plc now it asks me which visual studio integration i want well this is the runtime so i don't care about visual studio integration this would only be interesting if i was installing the development environment so the xe which is not interesting here so i'm just gonna finish uh your system ah oh, okay provide a clean system so i did have an older version here pre-installed actually from this image i deleted it but apparently everything was not completely deleted so i'm gonna have to true let's see if it works anyway 
No, I'm gonna have to clean this PLC up, so be right back. Okay, I spent way, way, way more time than I should to get rid of the old Twink at 4024 from this PLC. So that's amazing that for a one and a half billion euro company that they can not provide proper instructions or prop a proper script or anything official of how to get rid of the old version of Twinkat. And I spent so much time with this going into the registry, deleting files manually and ah, that I'm not going to tell you what I did. My recommendation here instead is to get a clean image from Backoff for your PLC. And when I say clean, I mean um, image of the operating system without Twinkat pre-installed. Just Windows, just operating system, nothing else. Hey, Jacob from the future here. So while I was recording this video, I actually got a message from the Backoff support that says that there is actually uh, instructions of how to upgrade a 4024 PLC to 4026. So you should not do like I did and, you know, do registry hacks and remove files manually and everything. There is a manual. However, it is not, for some reason, it is not available on their web Backoff website. You have to contact the your local, local Backoff support to get these instructions. I don't understand the reasoning behind that. I think that these are the type of manuals that should just be available when you do such a major release as 4026. I don't see the reason why you have to contact back of support to get these instructions. But again, you contact your local back of support and then you'll get this. So I recommend you to do this instead of doing a completely clean installation. Of course, a completely clean installation is definitely going to work. I have not verified whether this works or not. Um, I will verify it and I will make a separate video about it. Okay, now back to the Jacob previously. So back in time. Ciao. Now, uh, so I added the local source. Uh, I will, I'm only interested in installing the runtime here. This is my feed, by the way, the local that we added before. Now we have the Twinket standard here and we only have the runtime. And that's what we want. So I want to install the runtime now. And again, it is going to install it from my USB stick now. So install. Yeah, here we can see that the drivers are installed. Okay, installation of 17 out of 17 packages finished successfully. And we can actually even see the Twinket uh, icon down, down here for the runtime and the AMS router. I'm going to close and I'm going to... Uh, now we can see the runtime is installed. I'm going to exit this guy and I'm going to reboot the PLC. Okay, Twinket 4026 is installed. So if you go here about Twinket 4026, uh, I'm going to create, what I'm going to do is just to simply activate a very simple application on the PLC and see that the runtime is working and then we are done. Uh, I'm going to create a route to the PLC. So I'm going to go to my router here, edit routes, add, uh, add this one just by the IP address, add route. No secure ideas. The super secret default password of one for back of PLCs. Connected. Beautifully. Everything is working. That is nice. And it even says twink at 314026. And um, then that looks good. Close. And let's create a simple application here. File new project. Twink at project XAE project. That's what we want. The full XAE experience. Uh, let's use a default name. Add new item. Standard PLC project. We're gonna select our remote target here, which is our PLC, which we just added our route to. System real time. We're gonna scan the target. That looks good. It is our real PLC with four cores, the 650 again. I'm going to create a simple application here that just increments a number. And we'll increment it. And we activate it. Of course, uh, we need some test licenses there. And let's run it. The counter works. Yeah, everything works. That's great. And now if you go back to the target, go to about, we should have the test licenses there, which we do. So yeah, okay, that's it for this video. I hope it has been helpful. As you can see, there's quite a big difference 
of compared to how it was before with the previous versions of Twinket. And again, I just want to repeat that if you're going to try to install 4026 on your PLC, don't try to get rid of the old one. I mean, you can try it. Uh, sometimes I've had luck. Today I had zero luck. Nothing wanted to work. I just made a complete mess out of this PLC before I eventually got it to work. I would recommend you to really get a fresh image from back of uh, what if you want to use 4026 uh, on your PLC. So I want to point out here that we only installed the XAR here, so really the base minimum of what you typically want to have on a Twinket uh, PLC. Uh, normally, maybe, or optionally, you would want to have other packages like here as well, like you might want to have an HMI, and in that case you would have to prepare the USB stick with the package of the HMI server, right? So TF2000 with the new modern web-based one, or if you want to have the OPC UA supplement, right? Then you download the, everything related to OPC UA, so the OPC UA server, for example, or maybe the OPC UA client, if you want to use the PLC as an OPC UA client. Or if you want to use Modbus, then you download the Modbus packages, and you know you add everything that you want from your development environment, you prepare the packages, you put them on the USB stake or your local network folder or whatever, and you give the PLC access to that. And you know, on a, on a bigger organization, you probably don't want to manage it this way. In a bigger organization, typically what you most likely want to do is that you want to set up your own package server, right? So you download all the packages for your diff and then you have these configurations for the, the different machines that you have. And then the package server organizes everything in a centralized way. So you have a feed locally in your company network where you have all the packages available for the machines that you want to maintain or whether it's machines that you're you know delivering or or, or something so you can you can just keep track of what configuration is available for every machine and you keep all those packages internally in the organization or the company and this is extremely useful right because if you think about it now you can instead of you know having all these exe files all these installer files everywhere you have a machine you know so this is a machine, right? This is a PLC that would be represented by some machine in a factory or a telescope or something fancy pansy, you know. You know, that has all of this installed, and you can you can take this configuration of the machine and export it into an XML file that basically describes these are all the packages that I need for my PLC. And that's super powerful. Very, very convenient way. And you know, you can extend it in the way to sense that, you know, I want to have this, you know. I want this configuration as code and that means that you can also version control it right and then you can put this file into your version control system because you are doing version control i assume if you're not you should and you version control that and then you have you know traceability and everything for the machines that are out in in production which is fantastic well that's everything for this video uh, and until next time happy coding